Just because you want to be a published author doesn't mean that it's an editor you need. Hello, shameless writers. For the past several months, you've heard me wax philosophical about the importance of having an editor for whatever type of genre you're writing. And from the comments, I can assume that there are a fair few of you wondering, A, how do I afford this mystical editor that I need? And B, I don't exactly fit into the category that you're describing. Are you sure I need an editor? Now, I'm sure you're expecting me to explode in anger and start screaming at the camera that of course you need an editor. Everyone needs an editor. But not everybody does. I know not everybody needs an editor, because more than once I've been hired by someone who wanted a book edited, when really they meant ghostwritten. Or even worse, they hired me for an editing job, but really what they wanted was story coaching. What made this especially frustrating was that these clients came to me through my agency, and at that time, my agency didn't offer a story coaching or a ghostwriting option which meant that I was hired to give editing, I gave editing, they paid for editing, and they were not happy with editing because it wasn't what they truly wanted. And frankly, it wasn't what they needed. So if you're someone who wants to become a published author, either independently or through a publishing house, but you don't necessarily want to have to write the book yourself, it's probably not an editor you actually need. For those of you who are actual writers like myself, you might be scratching your head. Who wants to be an author but doesn't want to write the book? What shenanigans is this? If you feel that way, it's probably because you don't get sucked into a YouTube rabbit hole of watching all of those entrepreneur videos. <laughs> like I do. For successful business people or even up and coming business people, having a book is a really great way to earn extra cap while you're building up your business. Being an author is not your business. One of the biggest YouTube personalities is Gary Vee, AKA Gary Vaynerchuk. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Love those Eastern European names. This guy has a book out and he'll be the first one to tell you, yeah, I've got a book out, but I didn't write it. I sat down with an author and that author wrote it. Why? Because I'm not a writer, says Gary Vee, sprinkling F-bombs throughout his entire speech at unnecessary points. But F-bombs notwithstanding, he's absolutely right. If you're a social media personality, a good way to demonstrate that you're a thought leader or a serious business person is often to have a book for sale after your speech. This is great because not only are you being paid for your speech, then if the people who listen to your speech enjoy it and they want to hear more from you, then they can go and buy your book. Now the book is not your primary money-making strategy. It's just something that you have to demonstrate that you're a serious business person, you have serious ideas, and that the reader should consider hiring you for whatever it is that you offer. This might come as a shock to some of you, but Dave Ramsey is not actually an author. He has a lot of books and they've sold so many. I don't know if he uses a ghostwriter, I genuinely don't. But if he did, he would be forgiven for doing it. He's got the Dave Ramsey show, He's got speaking fees that I can imagine are very substantial. Dave Ramsey is a brand. Now his books serve as a very handy guide to the people who look to him for advice. But to say that he's an author in the same way that Stephen King is an author is just not exactly looking at the full picture of the value that Dave Ramsey provides. So if you're a business person or a personality or you have some other money-making venture, and you don't have any interest in actually becoming an author and learning how to structure a nonfiction work, I don't blame you. If you're starting up a business, who has time for that? You're probably working 12 hour days as it is. So the best way to have your merch as it is, and in this case, probably that's pretty much all your book is, a ghostwriter is the way to go. It can be expensive, depending on where you hire one. If you're going through a publisher, then that makes it a lot easier. The publisher will do all of the heavy lifting for you. However, if you're doing it independently, that means all of the work is on you. You need to find the ghostwriter and make sure you call it what it is, a ghostwriter. You are not looking for an editor. That's a good way to waste money and lead to a lot of conflict with the professional you hire. Editors are great tools, regardless of your motivation for writing and producing the book. 
I've talked in other videos about the various levels of editing that you might need, specifically on how not to get too much editing and therefore waste money. I put the link in the description and I'll put a card at the end of the video as well. But the most important thing to remember about an editor is they exist to correct what is already there. I've had a couple of clients hire me to be their editor. They get the most expensive type of editing, which is a full blown developmental edit, which seems great until I get about 100 pages in and I see a notation off to the side that says, I know this needs more description. Please add some for me. I trust you. Winky emoji. No, 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 that's, that's not how this works. If you are hiring an editor, it's because you have already written what needs to be written and you would like them to correct what is already there or to make suggestions on what they feel should be there. If you are hiring an editor, it's because you are the writer. So what happens if you do want to be a writer, but you have no idea how to get started? You've done everything that all of the internet videos, including mine, tell you to do. You've read in your genre. You've talked to other writers. You've had other writers read your stuff and they give you feedback and you're not really sure what to do with it. You try rewriting, you try throwing it away and trying something entirely new and still the criticism comes and you don't know if they're giving you criticism just to say something at critique group and they want to look smart or if it's really not good and you're doing something wrong. We're not all lucky enough to have people in our lives who can speak with authority on whatever it is we're writing about. And this goes for fiction and nonfiction people, by the way. Just because someone is a reader does not necessarily mean that they can offer you helpful advice. I'm sure a lot of you have encountered that. You go to critique group and somebody criticizes your stuff just to criticize it. And you kind of know that they're full of it, but at the same time you wonder if they're right. Are you just wasting your time? If you're not close to people in the publishing industry, for me, I live in Kansas. Yeah, we don't, there's no publishing houses out here, at least not ones that you want to sign with. So if you don't have that authority, who do you ask? The answer, an author coach or a writing coach or a story coach. There are so many names, but it's basically the same service. Hiring a writing coach is exactly like hiring a track coach if you want to be a runner. At least I think it is. I don't, I don't do athletics. Hiring a coach is for someone who wants to become an actual full-time professional writer. You don't just want to have a book to your name to sell at the end of a speech. You want people to say, oh, there's Susan Taylor. That's your name for now. She's that really great author who invented that whole world that I love. That's a pretty lofty desire. And you know that, and you know it's gonna take a lot of work to do it, and you're willing to do it. You just don't know where to start. For a lot of people, we start our writer's career long after school is over, because who has that kind of time when you're in school? So the great majority of people who want to be writers are already in adulthood. They already have expectations and responsibilities. Often they have children. And maybe, yeah, they do have a little bit of time to go to the community college and take some courses, but is that really the best use of their money? Honestly, probably not. You don't want to learn how to write in general. You want to learn how to write something very specific. You also want to learn how to market it and publish it and get people excited to buy it. The great thing about the information economy is there is so much of that information available online and for free. But here's the thing. If it's online and it's for free, it's probably very generalized. You hear me over and over in all of my videos saying, oh, no matter what your genre is, or oh, if you're doing nonfiction, or if you're doing fantasy, blah, 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 because this is general advice. It's not specific. And because coaching is such an individualized service, you're gonna get a whole lot more out of it. A coach is like your best friend, except you pay them. Typically, most coaching services involve calling and texting whenever you get stuck on a work, reviewing the work that you do, and at least weekly phone calls or Skype calls. The benefit to this service is that you're constantly improving because you're submitting work on a regular basis, the coach is reviewing that work and telling you, hey, you're doing the same mistakes here as you did last time, what's going on? Or, oh look, you have a whole new set of issues. 
Why are you switching tenses in the middle of a scene, Louise? We talked about this. And because this service is so individualized, a lot of coaches have a minimum time served, meaning you have to sign a three-month contract or in some cases a six-month contract. There are coaches, moi included, I just said moi like Miss Piggy, who does that? Who go month to month. Like ghostwriting, writing coaches are expensive, especially when you compare it to just a general copy edit. The question is what your outcome is. Are you just writing a book? And if so, an editor is probably the way to go. Or are you wanting to be a professional author, preferably one who can quit your day job and do it full time? You want to sell enough copies and get good enough reviews that you can build a career out of this. If that's the case, and you have the finances available, I would recommend going for a story coach. The service they provide is extremely valuable. And the very best part is that what you learn under the coach's tutelage, you will be able to use for the rest of your career. This isn't like a technology class where you learn about it, you get really good at it, and then like three years down the line, the technology changes and everything that you learned is now obsolete. <laughs> That's so fun. Once you learn to recognize your own writing voice and your own writing skills and know where you want to go with your book, the next book and the next one after that will come a lot easier to you. So those are the three major types of author services when it comes to generating a book. Which one is right for you is entirely dependent on what your business journey and your writer's journey is. If you like this video, I'd be honored if you share it on social media. And if you have any questions on what might be right for you, depending on your goals, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Now you might have noticed if you've been following my channel, I have not been keeping up with my twice or thrice weekly videos. And I'm a big enough girl to admit I bit off more than I can chew. With a day job and freelancing and you know, just general family stuff. Uh, three videos is not gonna happen, and for the foreseeable future at least, it looks like two videos isn't gonna happen either. So I've dedicated myself to posting one video per week, specifically on Wednesday afternoons, because weekday afternoons is apparently when most everybody is watching YouTube. I guess that's when the caffeine high wears off, who knows? <laughs> so until next Wednesday, take care and write well. Yeah.